everyone, it's me, Caitlin, you're welcome back to Caitlin's Toy Corner. I'm so sorry I've not yet uploaded today. Right after we got home from the shop, we ate dinner. Um, so, uh, we're there till like around 5.30, but we don't get home till like around 6. And then, um, yeah, like I said, we had dinner, unpacked my bag from the shop, had dinner, and go to the store before that. Um, I had to unload the dishwasher. But I'm here today with another video. <coughs> so, today we are going to be reading Zootopia Chapter 4. And I am super duper excited. I actually did Chapter 4, but it was like a while ago. I totally forgot what happened. And the video never got uploaded. It didn't upload because it will not upload right. Um, so, yeah, I just didn't want to upload for some reason. Anyway, today we're going to be reading, I'm so sorry I've not made one of these in a long, long time, but we're back with another one. So I'm super excited, and if you want to see what happens in Chapter 4, just keep on watching. And if you haven't seen Chapter 3, 2, and 1, make sure you go check out those videos, because otherwise it might not under, like make sense what's happening. Um, so I recommend you go watch those parts first. You might have to scroll a way down, but... Yeah, anyways, let's just get into this video. I'm sorry, my hair is, like, cooperating with me. Um, if you want to, like, know more on, like, the book and everything, it's in Chapter 1. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's find Chapter 4 here. Chapter 2. Uh, Chapter 4, Chapter 4, Chapter 4. There it is. <coughs> Actually, we might read 4 and 5, because 4 is really short. Alrighty, chapter 4, page 15. We haven't actually gotten that far yet. As the train came around a bend, Judy gazed out through the window at the incredible sight at the distance. Zootopia. She pressed her face against the glass and watched each borough of the city pass by. Judy, excited, Judy exited the train at the central station, which served downtown Zootopia, and made her way outside into the city's central plaza. It was incredible! She took out her earbuds and let the chaotic city sounds wash over her as she looked around, awestruck. Animals of all shapes and sizes rushed by, hurrying this way and that. It was a far cry from Bunny Burrow. She looked down at her phone and checked her Maps app to figure out which way to go. When she found her apartment building, the landlady, Dharma, and I thought I'm saying that wrong. When Armadillo led her to her little apartment. Welcome to the Grand Pangolian Arms, she said. Oh, man, lady, I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to say it right how much time. Stepping aside to let Judy in. Complimentary browsing once a month. Don't lose your key. Kudu, Kudu and Aurochs, Judy's neighbors, passed in the hallway. Judy greeted them warm and warmly. Oh, hi, I'm Judy, your new neighbor. Yeah, well, we're loud, said Kudo. Don't expect us to apologize it. Apologize for it, added Orox. The two hurried off, slamming the door of their apartment behind them. The landlady had left as well, leaving Judy alone in her apartment for the first time. She looked around. Greasy walls, rickety bed, said Judy. Then voices came from the other side of the wall. Be quiet, not you, be quiet, not you. Crazy neighbors, Judy flopped onto the bed with a big smile. I love it. So, like I said, it's really short. It's just, like, not even two full pages. So, we're going to go ahead and read Chapter 5 as well, because it's also not that long. Chapter 5. Beep, beep, beep. At the sound of her morning alarm, Judy sprang out of bed. She washed, brushed, and rinsed. Then she put on her pet. <coughs> pet put on her vest, pinned on her badge, and strapped on her belt. She was ready to protect the city. She glanced at the pink can of fox repellent sitting on the bedside table and walked out, leaving it behind. But after a moment, she reached back in the room and grabbed it, just in case. She left her apartment and headed toward the Zootopia Police Department for her first day on the job. Judy's eyes widened as she entered the chaotic and loud ZPD. Big burly cops pushed the criminal, criminal, criminal. Criminals. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Pushed 
scrambles through the lobby as people rushed around in every direction. She dodged the few husky animals before finally finding her way to the front desk. There, a pudgy, friendly-looking cheetah sat chatting with some other cops. Judy smiled at him as she approached, but he couldn't see her because she was shorter than the desk. Excuse me, Judy called up the desk. Down here! Hi! The cheetah leaned over the desk and saw Judy standing there in her uniform. Oh, um, goodness, she said. They really did hire a bunny. What? I gotta tell you, you are even cuter than I thought you'd be. Judy winced. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sure you didn't know, but for us rabbits, the word cute, it's a little... Oh, I'm sorry. Me, Benjamin Clawhauser, the guy everyone thinks is this a sadly dull, loving clock. Stereotyping you, he said apologetically. It's okay. Oh, um, actually, you've actually... Judy Stanford, as she tried to figure out how to say it. There is, uh, in your next the full there's Carl has removed a small donut from under the roll of neck fat. There you went, you little dickens, <laughs> said Claw Hazler to the donut. Then he joyfully crammed it into his mouth. I shall get you to roll call, so which way do I Judy asked. Oh, Claw Hazler said with his mouth full of donuts. Bullpen's over there to the left. Great, thank you, Judy said, and hurried off. Oh, the poor little bunny's gonna get eaten alive, he said, watching her go. Inside the bullpen, rhinos, buffaloes, and elephants prepared for work. They towered over Judy, but she didn't mind. She had excited, excitedly climbed up onto a massive elephant-sized chair and gazed around the room. Hey, Officer Hoss, Judy extended her paw to a gigantic rhino whose name tag read McCorn. You ready to make the world a better place, she asked sincerely. McLaurin snorted and reluctantly gave her a fist bump, nearly knocking her off the chair. Can ha said one of the officers as police chief Bogo and a gruff, capable buffalo entered the room. Everyone instantly fell in line and started stomping on the floor. All right, everybody, sit, said Bogo. I've got three items on the docket. First, we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room. He nodded toward the elephant officer. Francine, happy birthday! The shy elephant blushed as the cops clapped, snorted, and hooted. Number two, there are some new recruits with us, who I should introduce, but I'm not going to because I don't care. Bogo moved toward a map. Finally, we have 14 missing mammal cases, he said, gesturing to the push pin covered map. Fourteen cases. Now that's more than we've ever had, and City Hall is right up my tail to solve them. This is priority one, assignments. Bogo began barking out assignments as one of the officers handed out case files. Officer Grizzly, Fangmeyer, Delato, your team take missing mammals from the Rainforest District. District. Officers McCorn, Reidmans, Wolford, your team takes the hair square. Officer Higgins, Snarloaf, Trunk, Goodbye, Tundra Town. And finally, our first bunny officer, Hot, Judy said up. She'd been waiting anxiously for her assignment. Bogo grabbed the last case file from Higgins and held it dramatically out in the air as she looked at Judy. Parking duty, dismissed. Parking duty? Asked Judy quietly. She hurried after Bogo. Uh, Chief, Chief Bogo? Bogle looked around and saw no one until he looked down to see jo Judy at his ankles. Sir, you said there are 14 missing mail cases. So? So I can handle one. You probably forgot, but I was top of my class at the academy. Didn't forget, just don't care. Sir, I'm not just some token bunny. Well then, writing a hundred tickets a day should be easy, said Bogle, walking out and slamming the door behind him. A hundred tickets, said Judy, stomping a foot. She turned and closed the door and shouted, I'm going to write 200 tickets before noon. And that was the end of chapter 5. So, yeah. Well, let's be reading chapter 6, but not in this video. Um, let me down, let me know down in the comments what you think is going to happen next. Is she actually going to write 200 tickets before noon? And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm trying, I'm going to try and keep up with these more often now. I'm so sorry that I wasn't. 
But yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!